In this particular presentation, we will be discussing evidence refinement and processing. For those individuals that have not yet reviewed any of our previous webinars, please provide yourself a few minutes to do so, as we believe these will help provide you with additional insight on specific functions on utilizing FTK2. First of all is the introduction to FTK 2.0. Secondly is the FTK2 interface overview. And lastly is the FTK2 user case management. We'll go ahead and open up a new case here for the purpose of this discussion. As you may see, once you have created a new case, the user will be prompted for the case name. The user can enter a reference to the case if needed and has the ability to enter specific information about the case in the description field. Once this has been completed, you'll have a couple additional options you may select. First of all, allowing you to select on or off, open the case. Choose to deselect open the case, you are merely creating a new case in the database allowing you to add evidence in items at a later time. And secondly is the detailed options. That's where we'll have most of our discussions here on the uh, refinement area. As you can see here in the left hand pane you have four different icons which is the evidence, dis evidence processing, the evidence discovery option, the evidence refinement, and the in index refinement. And in the right-hand pane, during the initial case creation, the user will be able to select which processes to perform. Many of these options can easily be toggled on or off based on the refinement of, this, of a particular case. Particular options are set on by default in the evidence processing MD5 hash, the SHA-1 hash, the SHA-256, flag bad extensions, DT search text index, and generate thumbnails for graphics continue discussing here we'll talk about each uh, of these options that can be selected in here and some of them that we will go into more detail on. The MD5 hash creates an MD5 hash of the file itself. The SHA-1 creates a SHA-1 hash of the file. SHA-256 creates a SHA-256 of the file. Flag bad extensions uh, identifies files that have been have a mismatch between the file type and the extension. The entropy test leverages some advanced functions of the DT search, which we utilize within FTK2. This is very useful if using in conjunction with indexing, not to index binary data. Then you have the DT search, which is, is utilized to index the files for fast text searches, then generate thumbnails for graphics to generate pre-generated thumbnails for the larger graphics. Then you have decrypt EFS files, which encrypts when encrypted files are identified by FTK, PRTK will attempt to decrypt these on the fly. Then you have the HTML file listing, which creates an HTML file listing of all the files. Then we have data carve, which we're going to go ahead and select and go into more detail on the carving options here. Having selected the carving options, the user can select or deselect any of the following file types based on the refinement, such as the AOL, the bitmap, the EMF, the GIF files, the JPEG, OLE files, the PDF files, PNG, link files, and HTML files. Additionally, the user can select exclude ignorables up here. If you can see, you can toggle this on or off. In this field here on the left-hand side, you have the ability to clear all these and you can select specific ones of interest if you want to just carve those out or you can select all of them selecting the entire list of them. Once completed you would select OK then takes us to the the last option here under the uh, evidence processing which is a meta carve. You go ahead and expand a little bit on the meta carve. This basically the the meta carve carves the file system for detailed filed entries. Routine undeletions within FTK only finds files that are referenced by an existing directory such as FAT or an MFT file in the NTFS world. Metacarve searches unallocated clusters for metadata that is no longer referenced by the file system, allowing the user to find additional deleted files that existed prior to reformatting the volume. And Metacarve finds deleted files by carving for their metadata rather than their contents. In the FAT world, it looks for the FAT directory entries, possibly starting with a period or a slash or a dot dot entry, in clusters that are not referenced by an existing directory, meaning the parent directory had its own orphaned entry overwritten some way. In NTFS, we carve for MFT records outside the dollar sign MFT file with the goal of finding file records that were 
delete or deleted or later unreferenced after MFT defragmentation or reformatting the volume. That concludes the uh, evidence process, and we'll go ahead and move on to the evidence discovery. In the evidence discovery option window, the user will be able to add a text file that can identify custom files by their header. This type of functionality would be most beneficial as, a lar uh, as larger organizations use files and databases that are unique to their organization. You can browse out pulling in a TXT file um, in the end evidence processing option here. Then you have the evidence refinement advanced. In the evidence refinement window, the user can determine which files to index. The items a user can choose to index depends on the type of evidence the user is trying to handle within this case. As you can see here, you have different options you can toggle on and off. The include in file slack, the include in free space, including KFF ignorables. And then in the file status, you have the ability here to include or exclude certain things within your case, such as in the file status or the file types here. You have an option here to include only, exclude, or ignore certain ones. Secondly, you have the ability here to refine based on a date and size as well. You can use the created date, specifying a given range here, or you can use the last modified date, last access date, at least a certain size, at most a certain size. So you have some granularity that you can do within the refinement of that. Again, this is for the advanced users. Once completed, you go ahead and move on to the index refinement. In the index refinement uh, window, the user can determine which files to index. The items the user can choose to index depends on the type of the evidence the user is handling in this case as well. Depending on the size of the evidence, creating the index can require a large amount of time. However, the benefits once completed, the user can then conduct searches and exporting word lists that can be later utilized as dictionaries within your password decryption tools. On this window here, you have a very similar options that you do in your evidence refinement where you can exclude certain things or include certain things based on that refinement. And you also have the refine by date here that you can select as well. Again, created, last modified, last accessed, at least and at most. Now, once you've also once you've completed that, you have the ability here based on the file status and the file types. If you only want to index the items that match both the criteria that you have set within these these options here, once completed, you would then select OK, and you're taken back to the new case option. Validate that your information here under the case name, reference, and the description is correct. And then, again, if you've chosen to select open the case or not to open the case, you would select OK at this point. The case is then created in the Oracle database, still allowing you to, at this point to actually... Now you're given the option here in the Manage Evidence window to actually add evidence in based on, an, on the evidence file that you have. At this junction, you do have the option here to either add the evidence in, as I indicated, or you can cancel. By canceling, you're not adding any evidence into your actual case, but selecting Add, as we will do in this particular case, is you have an option here to select an acquired image, contents of a directory, individual files, physical drive, or a logical drive. We're going to go ahead and select the acquired image, selecting an, an image file that I've already created. We've got the precious, so those individuals that have been to some of our previous boot camp classes and such might be familiar with this one. Let's we'll select Open. And note you've got your precious image, so if you have a multitude of different uh, evidence files that may be uh, added to this, you can add them here. But note over here to the right-hand side where you have the state. The state indicates that currently that there's been nothing set as a time zone. We're going to go ahead and set a time zone here for the purpose of this discussion. And again, you have the options here for refinement options. As indicated previously, you can refine some of the things that we were working on previously uh, in this particular dialog here. You've got your carving options and so forth and so on. So if you choose to change some of those, and note there are a few of them that are actually grayed out, which you can't make any modifications to based on your selections previously. We're going to go ahead and select OK. Again, we'll select go OK again and proceed. Now at this point, the case is actually being processed in, 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 in the um, database. And note over here to the left-hand side, as things are gradually being added in and indexed, the tree window begins to grow here. 
As the case continues building, you can see the progress window that it continues here. And once all the evidence has been processed, this dialog will give you a closed option over here in which you can close this out. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this here. As you can see, you can navigate through your case right now, looking at the evidence files that you do have added into this particular case. Now, one thing that I do want to emphasize on is based on uh, when you're adding in your evidence items here, when you select an image file or a directory or an individual file, physical drive or a logical drive, you want to make sure that there's sufficient space when creating and processing these cases as to where you're storing that. A rule of thumb in which I utilize is the data itself, about every 500,000 items requires roughly about a gigabyte of space storage. Then on the indexing side of things, you've got about every every 100 megabyte of text needs roughly about 20, my, 20 megabytes of space in storage. You can see we've done our refinement on our, our particular case here, and we've got a case file that's actually open. That pretty much concludes this particular presentation, and if you have any additional questions, you're more than welcome to send those back to us. We'll be more than happy to try to answer those, and hopefully uh, as we continue building some of these uh, presentations on searching and other things, they will be most beneficial to you. Appreciate your time, and thank you, and you have a great day.